Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to welcome, welcome, welcome to Easy Markets Daily Pitch International with me, that is on Charles, because today is the 12th of June 2023. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's morning session where we're gonna have a a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always. Mm, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendations and should not be considered as such. This material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. Look, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest. And uh, yep, I'll disappear here for a little bit from that little left corner and we can continue after that. Okay, so now then, um, yeah, everything's working okay, I think, yeah. Look, um, before we jump in into the charts, as usual, um, let's quickly have uh, just a quick actually reminder of our Easy Markets website, which you can always check out for more information about. And now we can jump in into the charts. Look, uh, Nikkei 225, uh, I talked about this one and um, basically I'm going to pick up on the instruments that I looked at um, last week um, on Friday uh, just to see how kind of everything sh is shaping up and how everybody everything shaped up um, after Friday and um, how we can position ourselves on these instruments for this week, basically. Look, um, for now, the Nikkei 225, uh, we have the 32,733 territory right here, uh, which is the barrier which I'm still keeping an eye on. Look, I also talked about this 31,990 zone. I said that if we do pop above it, my next target is the current highest point of June, or at least the area near that area, near that level. Uh, but at this point, uh, given how everything's shaping up, I think that, uh, look, if you are long here and let's say you are still aiming for, you know, for this level right there for that highest point, the current highest point of June, I would say probably it's a good point, a good option to take your profits here and just to maybe just to, re you know, reposition yourself here. Look, for me at this point, I would say, if I want to go further north, yes, I'm kind of leaning towards that right now, as long as we stay above this uh, steeper upside line taken from the low of the 11th of May. But uh, an additional confirmation break here, you know, additional confirmation for that upside uh, could come on a break of this 32,733 because a forthcoming higher high will be confirmed then. Uh, and then, yes, we could uh, aim for those uh, nice... Um, uh, beautiful numbers like 33,000 mark or even uh, or even above that. So this is a very simplistic approach here on Nikkei. Um, in general, uh, the big action in Nikkei could come. And this is where my uh, title for this video today says a very, very big week ahead of us. Um, basically, we do have a lot of information coming out, a lot of data coming out. So what I'll probably... I'll well, I'll in order not maybe not to confuse because um, I will probably pick up on the relevant ones. You know, let's say if I'm talking right now about Nikkei, I'll pick up on the uh, Japanese data. Um, well, the first uh, kind of big. Uh, the big set of data will come out on Thursday, actually, for Japan, when the, the trade balance, Japanese trade balance will come out. Um, and then Friday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, sorry, not Friday, let me just go back. And yeah, I think it was Friday. Yeah, the uh, Friday we'll, we'll, we will receive the BOJ uh, interest rate decision. Um, that one, of course, is expected to um, remain the same at uh, minus zero. 0.10%. Um, of course, uh, yeah, we'll we'll have a look at that. We'll see how it plays out. But just to let you know that in a way, Nikkei could you know could have its moments on Thursday and Friday. Well, to be honest, I think that it will have its moment on on it might have its moment on Tuesday and Wednesday when we'll get the uh, the U.S. on Tuesday we'll get the U.S. Uh, CPI numbers and on Wednesday we'll get the interest rate decision from the Fed. But I'll get to that in a bit when I'll cover uh, the U.S. indices. <laughs> Uh, sorry for scratching my nose. I think I have something uh, in my nose. Uh, but anyway, uh, 
look, uh, ASX 200, uh, the Australian index. Uh, for now, um, I'm sticking to the same game plan that uh, we could see here, a mo maybe a possible declining uh, or falling channel. Um, and as long as we remain inside that pattern, I would say that yes, uh, we could go uh, lower and uh, looking at the picture here I, I talked about this little hurdle the 7131 and uh, basically as long as we remain below it then there is a good chance for this one to slide further uh, further south and uh, yeah at this point for now I would say uh, looking at this picture um, my next target in a way is this the area between the 7064 76 levels and then yes we will go from there similar as to nikkei the reaction could come on you know on the news on the on the news from the us but let's not forget about the uh australian data is itself um the main one i think it's um where is that where is that where is that today by the way guys it's a very boring day in terms of economic data i think that everybody's kind of preparing for tomorrow um and for you know the rest of the days uh tomorrow wednesday thursday and friday uh but the nzd data will be very important i mean maybe australia actually doesn't have much i mean apart from the uh unemployment numbers that are coming out on thursday um so just kind of uh keep that in mind and um but it's the it's new zealand that's going to be on the in hitting the spotlight with its gdp numbers as well on thursday so you know maybe we'll have some reaction in in asx 200 too um jumping into china uh china yes uh, the index uh, from the technical perspective is pushing back up here you can see that it's testing this downside line and i talked about this um i said that if in, i need to see a nice good clearance of this downside line and also a push above the uh 12600 territory somewhere around here well we got the push above the 12600 but we still didn't get the break of this downside line um if we want to go uh further north then yes certainly a break of this territory is required um in order to go uh lower than well this is the thing that as long as this downside line remains intact then in a way uh there is this um issue with further upside because again uh, as long as the uh, the trend line for example in general in any case uh, the downside the upside one um if if it remains intact then this, the trend is still valid so in this case the trend is uh, the short-term trend is still to the downside um however if this downside line is just seen as a little tentative downside line which doesn't for example carry much significance then maybe yes we could see a break of it but in that case if we do see a break of this downside line i will only aim for the 50 the 100 or even the 200 day ema um i have this downside line in here as well uh which uh, could be um also something to watch for so this downside line is drawn from the high of the 28th of january and uh yeah if uh, then you can see that there's a bit of room here and in a way these uh, these three emas come in nicely into action because um um because yes uh, the 200 day ema the last one here is kind of currently coinciding with the this with this downside line and in a way let's say if this uh, curves up down a little bit maybe yeah uh, it could just continue beautifully slide you know or go in, uh, in the same line as with the, as as this downside uh, trend line um so in a way there's a lot of ifs uh, but first of course a confirmation break is needed until then i am not really you know doing anything here i'm just observing the price action because for example on thursday uh we'll get the chinese industrial production numbers guys so just watch out for those um india's nifty 50 just a quick update look from the technical perspective um i think in a way this yeah this will follow uh what's going to be happening today um in um in the in, in not today sorry not today this week in the indices and uh, across the world 
and uh, I think that this is what we're going to get here. Like we'll get a, rel a related reaction to in in, in Nifty Fifty. Um, but for now, at this point, if we just you know go from what we see, um, we are trading above this um, upside support line, taken from the low of the 29th of, of March, and as long as that remains intact, then yes, the trend is still to the upside. If we start breaking it, that's when I'll consider maybe slightly lower levels. Not I'm not going to go rapidly down strongly to the downside. No, I'm just going to aim for slightly lower ones. Oh, I can see there in the chat room, uh, Daredevil Dave. Good morning. Good morning to you too. I hope you had a fantastic weekend and you're having a wonderful Monday too. I hope everybody else who's joining in right now is having a wonderful start of Monday. Um, oh, let me just do, write good morning to everybody as well in this uh, chat room. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, there we go. That's, uh, you know, uh, there we go. It's, it's always much nicer this way. Um, I know it's cheesy, but hey, um, it's still nice. Uh, NASDAQ. So, 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 um, the Fed. Um, first of all, this, where we are standing currently. Okay, so basically now I think that, yes, everybody's anticipating a no uh, interest rate hike. Um, look, uh, RBA, uh, Bank of Canada, those two central banks were also not kind of planning to do any rate hikes, but they still did. Um, and again, this is maybe the fear that, you know, the Fed could follow. However, the problem with the Fed is that... Um, it will also keep an eye on the um, on the CPI numbers on Tuesday. So I think that there is look at this point we're seeing this this kind of chart right here. But um, let's have a look what's happening. What's going to happen on uh, after Tuesday? Um, after Tuesday's data comes out, so probably I will only be able to talk about that on um, on Wednesday. But uh, look, uh, the let me just remind myself about the. Tuesday's numbers that are coming out. Um, where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Um, CPI. So yeah, currently the expectation is actually for a decline for a uh, for the core and the headline numbers, the both month on month and year on year numbers. So it's currently the current expectation is for a decline, for a lower number than the previous to come out. Um, again. Uh, you know, however, uh, we can we don't know we don't have the crystal ball, so the only option for us is to try to wait. Um, look, if you have a I don't know like a, a huge balance, tra a huge trading account, and your positions are very small, and you can allow yourself uh, to kind of um, you know go into a big stop uh, to have a very very big stop loss. Okay, whatever, guys, you can do that. I mean, uh, this not everybody has that, so you're one of the lucky ones in that case. So then you can basically, you know, enter a position before the before the news. How? Because again, that could, you know, it yes, it could work in your favor, but at the same time, it could go against you, and uh, um, yeah, that wouldn't be a very uh, attractive moment. So uh, that's why I always say wait for the news to come out, and then you know we could do something about it. Um, so yeah, um, um, and then we can you know then then we can do do some sort of a reaction you know reaction trade, but. Look, whatever you feel you feel comfortable with. I mean, if you feel comfortable with this, you know you can do. It. The only thing is that uh, always have your stop loss in place, and you know, and uh, just uh, always risk what you can afford to lose. Um, I can see there in the chat room there uh, Mustafa Sepahi. Good morning to you too, and Brandon Pr uh, Pritchett. Uh, BOC was paused for three months, then did a hike. Yes, you are right. No secret there. Um, so if you're th saying that basically that uh, it's now it's time for uh, the Fed to do the pause. OK, yeah, maybe. Look, uh, it's it's fine with that. So it's we're not, you know, we're not arguing on that in that sense. Um, yes, it could do the pause, you know, or, or, or like I said, we'll see how the CPIs come out, you know, if they and at the moment, the market, um, the market is feeling OK ish. I think the only problem is that it continues to rise. I think that the Fed also needs a bit of a, you know, a, a move to the downside on in the market. But again, 
uh, we don't know exactly what they want, so they, we can only always predict or try to guess what they want So and try to find the logical uh, conclusion in everything. Look, But at this point, I would say I'm going from the trader's perspective, and uh, if you are... Uh, willing to take some sort of opportunity, and you know, and then uh, you know, after the news comes out, yes, you can. The only, the only thing is, like I said, you need to protect yourself carefully. Um, too bad that we, like I said, we don't have the crystal ball, but um, how and you know, to know the market reaction in advance. But um, uh, yeah, we can only try to position ourselves carefully. But uh, yeah, Brandon uh, Pritchard, um, yes, of course. Like I said, uh, I agree with I agree with you. I mean, maybe yes, we could see a pause in all this, but I'm always leaving leaving an element of the doubt. Honestly, how many times I've seen uh, uh, stuff which you know should be logical, should be uh, this, should be that, according to expectations, and then suddenly it comes out different, and then. Uh, when it comes out different, uh, then an explanation follow is follow follows after that, and then everybody's like, "Oh yeah, that's logical," you know. But actually, in the beginning, the logic was different. So that's why I'm always I'm, I have this skepticism in me. So unfortunately, that's me. So yeah, I'm always a little bit on the skeptical side side about everything. But um, look, coming from the technical perspective here on NASDAQ, uh, we do have an important barrier here, this one right here between the 14,642 and 725 levels right here. So I said to you last week that in order for me to go higher, I need to see a push above that barrier, this 14,725. If, we, if I get that, great, I will go further north and I'll go for this territory right there. Um, let me just put an extra line here, I think. Let me bear with me one moment. Uh, this one right here. So, yeah. So this territory, roughly, um, why is it like that? Uh, this one, I don't like that color. There we go. So the area between the 15,260 and the uh, 69 levels, approximately around there, uh, that could be the next target. Of course, before that, the psychological 15,000 mark is also uh, on the watch. Um, but yeah, in general, it will consider, like I said, some higher levels if you do get that pop. I'm I, I'm not surprised, for example, if we if we will see today or you know even tomorrow, we'll see a bit of like sideways activity right here, and um, you know maybe we'll see a drift back down here, you know, a nice beautiful range in general, and uh, then maybe during after the uh, Fed decision, maybe then we'll see that exit. But uh, for the downside, what I need here is a break of this upside line taken from the low the 13th of March. If I get that, then yes, more uh, sellers could join in. Um, now then, jumping into the S&P 500, uh, similar story, to be honest, not much to talk about here, but um, um, we do have a, um, a, an important barrier, which we've kind of tested last week. Uh, we came close to that 4,327 territory, which is the highest point of August. And uh, yeah, if we do clear that one, then certainly I will get a little bit more excited with further upside. So in other words, I need to see a push above that in order to go higher. Um, also, last uh, week, I talked about this idea maybe of seeing something of a like a, like a broadening triangle pattern and uh, according to the tier rules these patterns kind of kind of tend to be like a continuation pattern and kind of it's working i would say you know but um uh look we cleared this 4305 territory actually talked about this barrier and uh we stayed above it so in a way i'm kind of leaning towards further upside but uh, to be honest i would like to see a break of, of this of this uh 4327 level first uh, because a forthcoming higher high will be confirmed then and we would be above a key resistance barrier. Let me actually, you know, for our future reference, I'll mark this because it's quite a nice uh, level, quite a nice barrier. If we, yeah, uh, if we do clear that, my next target, and this is where I need to go hunting for levels. My next target will be uh, this one right here, around here, the 4,355. But if that gets easily cleared, the ideal target is the 4,509 level right there. And then we will uh, go from there. Um, in terms of that broadening triangle no longer needed, I think we can reuse this uh, line and we can draw something a little bit steeper. 
And uh, if we do clear this steeper upside line, then yes, I will consider a move to the downside. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, yes, uh, so far so good. Uh, maybe not ideally, but um, yeah, we're still trading above that. 33,850 territory. I spoke about that level um, last week and I said that if we clear it, then yes, uh, more buyers could join in here. And look, in general, I am sticking to that idea uh, because my, my ideal scenario is somewhere around here and uh, around these levels. Um, but um, what can I say? Mm, given that it's a, a crazy week like this, right? Um, we do have a bunch of data coming out and, uh, look, um, here, um, I, I, I'm not surprised. I won't be surprised, for example, if we do see, we start seeing, let's say, um, a slowly, a, a slow move higher, but like in a, in a channel or something, or maybe even a veg or something like that. So basically something, uh, among the lines of these, these two. So look, Again, maybe this is me uh, trying to get ahead of myself or trying to predict the future way too much. But um, in order to can even consider something like that, then we need to see it like a, a stronger decline first, maybe a, a hold up somewhere here and then a rebound back up. And then, yes, we can draw this lower side, you know, lower line. And uh, then, yes, we could go from there. But um, let's not overcomplicate lives for now. Uh, they will be complicated uh, later, but at this point, I will just go from this. That as long as we stay above the thirty-three thousand eight hundred and fifty territory right here, I am leaning slowly to the upside. Um, if we do start falling back down, mm, well, ideally for the downside, I would actually like to see a drop below the fifty-day EMA here, shown as the red line, um, and then yes, uh, um, I would consider a larger correction to the downside. Uh, the German index, DAX. Uh, so, mm, annoying. Uh, annoying, but at the same time, you know what? I think I'm getting used to that already and it's it's stopping me from being annoying. But look, um, I talked about this last week. I said to you that we are in some sort of a, a falling channel pattern here, which at the same time could be uh, classed maybe as a bullish flag or something like that. But, you know, which, uh, yes, according to all the TA rules could open the door, you know, to some higher levels if we see a breakout. But this is the thing. If we see a breakout, the breakout is still the important one. If we do clear the upper side of the falling channel, great. Okay. If we do clear that 16,063 territory, that's even better. Uh, we could, you know, get a little bit more comfortable with further upside. So at this point, I would say just uh, continue monitoring this little barrier here. If we do get that clearance, okay, great. You know, I'll, I'll consider some, some higher levels. Um, but, uh, let's not forget the fact that while we or as long as we remain inside a pattern or let's like like this one for example like a falling channel we could still drift lower so just kind of keep that in mind um after uh last week's uh, roller coaster ride i mean nothing really surprises me so you know uh, yes we are looking for that trend uh, we need the trendy market maybe but look okay sideways activity is also a trend but um it's also a trend but um yeah it's not that you know not that trend that that uh, is in everybody's head FTSE 100 um look i'm still examining the same scenario over and over and uh, to be honest it's oscillating around the 200 day EMA and you know what I really don't like this and I would rather wait for a break of one of the sides here of this um well let's call it a triangle the the, the kind of the the fatter lines here uh, we do have an upside one taken from the low of the 13th of October but yes um the other one here I mean, I think that the better option is to wait for a clearance of one of the sides of the uh, the triangle. All this uh, trading activity in here, it's very difficult to predict and uh, it, it could be so choppy that, you know, okay, if you manage to squeeze something out of this, congratulations, guys, you're doing much better than me. But um, in general, like I said, I, I like to, to find something a little bit more obvious, you know, uh, because the, the market is already complicated enough so um 
yeah why why to overcomplicate your your life with this you know um but look FTSE um keep your eyes on the data UK data as well because um I think uh, when we will when we'll kick off um tomorrow we will get the job numbers from UK we will get the un, uh, the employment change number the unemployment rate uh average earnings uh so if you are trading pounds or you know FTSE then you know you keep an eye on that one but also keep your eyes on Wednesday's data from UK we'll get the GDP figures from UK so another thing to watch out um I think that it comes down on Thursday and Friday mainly yes mainly it will be Mm, Thursday, I think it will. Yeah, we we'll, we do have an exciting day on Thursday, in general. But you know, uh, we do have New Zealand GDP numbers, uh, trade balance from Japan, uh, employment numbers from Australia, industrial productions from production from China, um, Europe uh, interest rate decision on on. Don't forget about that, by the way, guys. In Europe, uh, interest rate decision on on. The ECB interest rate decision on, on Thursday, initial jobless claims, continuous jobless claims on Thursday as well and from the US and the retail sales, the, probably the most important. And then they will it'll be and then after that, we'll get the ECB press conference. So something to keep an eye on. Um, yeah. Uh, so coming back to this, um, I think I'm just going to observe this. I'm going to observe the price action. I'm not really going to do much with uh, the FTSE 100 dollar index of course even we we don't even have to mention the fact that there you know might be strong effects on the on the US dollar this week because we do have um first of all we do have something of a um, like a falling channel but not a very let's say constructive one I would say yet because it's not really ideal I would rather stick to the descending triangle pattern idea and uh, we rebounded from the lower side of that uh, that pattern the the areas near the 103.40 level so if we do get another drop here then yes a forthcoming lower low will be confirmed guys um, for the upside now a break of the upper side of this uh, let me just get rid of this uh, it's a little bit confusing so a break of the upper side of the triangle of the descending triangle then yes could open the door to some higher levels but I think that it's better to wait for a push above this downside line at least and then yes we could uh consider a move higher now jumping into gold uh looking at the picture here yes we are seeing some sort of a little bullish flag so we have our pole we have the two candles here correction candles and now we're seeing a bit of a push higher um I think this could work out, but I think that a confirmation break is needed. Simple as that. This territory right here below the 50-day EMA and below that 1970s zone right here, um, it's a little bit difficult one because we could see a push higher. For example, you know, it fails somewhere here, then it drifts back down. So it takes, up, takes out a lot of buyers. And uh, yeah, we get that frustration moment. So I think that the mm, the easier option maybe could be that 1970 territory together with that 50-day EMA. If we do clear that, then yes, I will go higher. I will to aim for this uh, resistance territory between the 1983-85 levels. And if that gets cleared, well, guess what? Uh, 2000, here we come, potentially uh and uh, then yes we will go towards those higher levels but uh, there's a lot of ifs for first so before we can you know be satisfied with this scenario um yes i think for me personally a confirmation break here is needed um if you are looking for example you're thinking hey maybe i'll miss out on this ter um, this idea here maybe you know it'll, I'll, I'll try to capture this little territory well you can the only problem is that then you will have to have a bit of a tight stop loss because for example uh a drop below this territory right here this and uh i'm sorry not this one but this one this is the friday's low this is the futures market by the way uh so sorry not the futures market but we do have a sunday candle here um but the friday's low near the 1956 um and uh yes if we do get a drop below that then yep we will consider a move uh, to the downside guys um, so for this point I would say um, 
look, you know, for th at this point, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm kind of somewhere in deep inside me. I'm leaning towards the upside, but again, for me, the confirmation break is needed, which is going to be around this 1970 territory. Uh, silver, just a quick update on silver. Um, again, similar story, but look, we did reach some of our levels here, some of our targets. Uh, now we're just oscillating around that 24.21 zone right here. Uh, not really helping much. Um, the only thing is, okay, if we want to try to play it in our favor somehow, I would say this way. Yes, it did provide good resistance and support uh, recently. Mm, it acted as this as nice inside swing low here of the 9th of June. And if we do push back above the 24.21 territory right here, then yes, I will uh, get excited with some higher levels. And then, yes, I will once again start aiming to the upside. But I think that it's maybe better to just to maybe draw something around this here, the 24.29 zone. If we do clear that one, then yeah, I will uh, start slowly aiming to the upside. I, my ideal scenario, ideal target here is a, a move towards this highlighted zone, the upper one here, the, between the 24.6473 levels. And then we'll and then we'll go from there. Uh, for the downside, well, uh, I've drawn my downside scenario from around here previously, but I think I need to redraw this a little bit. Um, I think I need to put this on the chart. So uh, this upside support line taken from the low of the 25th of May could be something to watch out for. Um, this highlighted zone, I think it's maybe time to push it a little bit lower here. Um, some of these levels, I think that I'll mark the lowest point of May instead at 22.67 zone approximately around here. And uh, yeah, um, I'm still going to keep an eye on this 23.5253 area just because it acted as a good area of support recently. And uh, yes, we only had false breakouts through this one. And uh, uh, if we do get a drop here, then yes, at the same time, we would already be placed below this upside line. But that's why I'm saying that I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside for now. Uh, but I need uh, some confirmation breaks here first. Oil. Uh, so let's have a look at what's happening here. Okay, we're drifting to the down, or we already drifted to the downside, and we continue to do so. Um, I talked about this, and I said that if we do fall somewhere below this territory, below the 70.67, then yes, uh, we could slowly aim for the 70 zone, 70.13, something like that. Um, if that gets cleared, then yes, all eyes are going to be on this upside line, taken from the low of the 3rd of May. And of course, uh, me being me, uh, trying to find something that, you know, kind of pleases me. Uh, look, I'm, I have drawn this uh, rising veg pattern, but to be honest, it's not a very pretty one. So I would say don't really focus on it too much. Um, I would say instead, just kind of keep your eyes on the upside line, treat it as an upside line for now. Um, if we do rebound from here, uh, we test, let's say, if we do test this upside line and then rebound from here, then yes, maybe we'll consider some slightly higher levels. Uh, the only problem from the very short-term perspective is this, uh, this little downside line. And uh, mm, ah, no, maybe not even this, I think maybe even this, uh, yeah. So something like this could be a, of an interest to us. Um but if we start breaking this upside line, that's where it could become a little bit more exciting for a few more sellers. And then, yes, it could open the door towards the, um, this is where I need to redraw this level, towards the uh, lowest point of May, near the 6704 territory, or just we can round it up towards that 67 zone. So yeah, uh, and then we will kind of go from there. Uh, Ethereum. So, uh, big decline. Uh, yes, uh, big decline on Saturday. Uh, look, in general, the crypto world is not going through uh, good times right now, right? Because again, the SEC is on the uh, is on on CoinDesk. Uh, sorry, CoinDesk. CoinDesk. Uh, Coinbase. What's what with, what's with me with that? Uh, Coinbase. Uh, I think it was Coinbase. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so basically, I think, uh, yeah, I don't know why it's CoinDesk all the time for me, but Coinbase, um, look, 
Coinbase and Bitcoin, uh, Binance.usa, that US, sorry. Um, those two are, yes, are in the spotlight right now. And the whole, of course, the crypto world is feeling the hit, heat and the hit uh, because of that. So um, we dropped below that 1785 territory. I spoke about that level and I uh, said to you that my next target will be the 208 EMA tick. And then if that gets cleared, the next target is the 1688 level. Not tick yet, so but maybe we'll get there. Uh, and then so on and so on. Maybe then we will aim for this upside line taken from the low of the uh, 22nd of November. Um, yeah, basically, that's kind of it on Ethereum. Um, look, for me, for the upside at this point, and previously I looked at this 1929 territory, but I think now we can uh, draw this downside line right here. And uh, me being me again, uh, seeing something that maybe I want to see, uh, like a falling wedge. <laughs> Look, if that's the case, a uh, falling wedge all the way towards this upside line, beautiful rebound, push up, uh, break of this upper side. This is my golden ideal scenario, right? But of course, the market doesn't always do what I want it to do. And uh, maybe, you know, we should kind of uh, for now stick to what we have and go slowly. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, yes, yes, of course, uh, decline, a beautiful drop here, and uh, look at this, we fell below this uh, 107.31 territory, and uh, my next target actually was this, the 105.09, but that was not stopping it, and just kind of slid further south, I think that this time, if we do continue to trade below this uh, 105.09 territory, then yes, I will continue aiming to the downside. Uh, once again, I would like to see actually a revisit maybe of this 95.21 territory. If we do get that, then yes, great. Uh, more, uh, you know, maybe then we'll we'll see a, a, some buying activity from here. Um, or maybe if we clear it, we could go towards the lowest point of November of 2022. Um, Litecoin, uh, similar story, but this one is a little bit more radical. Uh, boom, guys, uh, I talked about this. My next target was the 208 EMA together with this upside line. And we broke it. We broke the upside line uh, taken from the low, low of the 9th of November of last year. Um, look, um, I would say this way. I think I can even redraw this a little bit because both of them are very tentative, to be honest. We only have like two touches and now we just have a breakout. So uh, the one thing thing that you can do here is let's say further downside is keep your eyes on the 75.34 territory if we can if we clear that yep my next target is the area near this lowest point of march of this year or uh, i think it's is this the lowest ah uh, no 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 yeah that's the lowest point of this year yeah great could be could could be a good target so yeah if we do drop again below the 75.34 territory i'll go lower for the upside, um, a push back above this upside line, maybe even actually not this one, but the previous one like this could be ideal. Simple as that. AUD and ZD. So yeah, um, of course, uh, I've mentioned all the news that are that is coming out uh, that are coming the news that is coming out this week. Um, and of course, respectively, you have to keep an eye on the relevant uh, and related pairs uh, with, you know, related uh, currencies in there. So AUD and ZD, um, yep, uh, watch out for the GDP numbers from New Zealand. Um, watch, uh, yeah, GDP numbers from New Zealand on Thursday, then the um, employment numbers as well on Thursday from Australia. So a good move here in um, in uh, AUD and ZD could happen, I think that. But look, I am keeping an eye on this uh, 1.1032 territory. If we do clear it, I will go a little bit higher. Um, this will confirm a forthcoming higher high. And my next target is the highest point of February or the high, the current highest point of this year. Um, for the downside uh, is this. I think that it's time to do that. Uh, I think it's time to draw this little upside line. If we do get, get a break below it, I'll go lower. AUD JPY, um, looking at the picture here, um, I would say it's uh, quite an interesting one. And uh, uh, we broke the upper side of the rising channel. I talked about this and I said that if we do clear it, then, you know, great. Uh, maybe, you know, we will ignore the whole 
a rising channel pattern. And to be honest, I think that's the case. We need to ignore it. I will get rid of this uh, upper side for now. Um, I will stick to this upside line as, as well for now. I can draw this uh, here as well, this other upside line. So a bunch of tentative, short-term tentative upside lines here that we can draw. For the downside, the way I'm gonna position myself is this, that I'm, if we do fall below the 93.85 territory right here, I will consider a correction here to the downside. At this point, I'm watching this uh, 94.15 level, which is quite an important barrier of resistance, or should I say could be, because we act, it acted as a good area of support and resistance back here in November of, of 2022. Um, if we do get that, yes, then yes, I will. Uh, if we do clear it and we, let's say, stay above it, we already cleared it, but if we stay above it, I will go further north. Mm, USDCHF, uh, just a quick update on this one. We fell off the cliff here on uh, Thursday. Uh, on Friday, we corrected back up. Um, we're currently oscillating around the 50-day mm, the, uh, the EMA, and I think what's time is for me to remove all the drawings and start fresh because some of the levels are working, some not. So whenever you see something like that, you know, it's not a problem to rethink everything, redraw everything and try to find maybe some sort of other logic everywhere. So I will mark the lows of last week near the 0.8986. Um, if we clear that one, then yes, I will aim lower because a forthcoming lower low will be confirmed. For the upside, um, look, um, I think that maybe it's good to keep your eyes on the 100-day EMA. In terms of a level, okay, maybe this could work out, the 0 0.9107. Maybe that could be an interesting moment here for the bulls. Uh, but it, I think it might be because we would already be above the 100-day EMA and then the path towards the 200-day EMA would be open. Uh, so at this point, long story short, if you can see from what I have drawn here, I am taking a very simple approach and I'm waiting for a clearance of one of these levels. Until then, um, it could be a bit of a difficult one. Look, you can keep an eye, for example, on the on this these inside swing lows here uh, near the 0 0.9035 level, which also coincides nicely with the 50-day EMA. So, for example, if it continues to provide resistance, then maybe a slide back down here could be possible. If we climb above it, okay, um, the path towards the 100-day EMA could be open. But again, you would have to you know, uh, always have your uh, stop loss in place just in case it kind of quickly reverses against you. And we do have reasons to reverse or, you know, uh, go uh, uh, in a different direction than because we do have a bunch of data coming out um, this this week. USD JPY, um, beautiful descending triangle. The only thing what's left here is to see it break, break lower. Um, break it, break a, a, according, break out according to the uh, t technical analysis rules. Um, a descending triangle, yes, uh, is more of a bearish indication. However, a clearance of the lower side of it is needed uh, because we have seen many times that it worked the opposite way. So just being careful here and waiting for that clearance. But at this point, I'm just watching this pattern. Uh, USD CAD, um, okay, okay, this one's interesting. So we had a bit of a, a breakout here. Um, we had a violation again of this upside line. And uh, if we do, uh, if we do rebound from it, great. Uh, we could see maybe a bit of a move back to the upside, back to that 200 day EMA. So far, um, kind of things are pointing towards that. But if we start heavily dropping below the subside line and we drop below let's say the 1.3315 level or something like that then yes uh further declines are possible gbpchf uh, something to keep an eye on this week and there we go there we go guys friday we had a breakout and we stayed above this downside line i talked about this uh downside line drawn from the high of the 31st of october i've uh, kept on mentioning it last week and i said to you that wait for it wait for it to, to you know to break and then we could get a little bit more comfortable look I'm not saying that this is like straight away, that's it from here is only up, up and away. No, anything can happen. Maybe, you know, maybe this uh, this territory will provide resistance or, you know, maybe this other uh, area will provide resistance somewhere around here and, you know, we'll drift back down. 
But um, at this point, I would say, okay, let's maybe, maybe, maybe my arrow is way too ambitious here. Uh, let's aim for these levels first, because one thing that I want to, uh, let's say, well, one thing that I want to mention is that, let's say we, yes, it opened the door to some higher levels, and yes, we will go higher from here. But if you if you remember uh, a few times, I already mentioned that we kind of retest the broken trend line. If let's say if it was carrying any significance, like this one in, in this case, we do go higher, and then we find some resistance here. We drift back to the downside. We retest the the broken trend line from the other side, and then we you know we push higher again. So something like that could be possible, uh, but just kind of be you know a little bit on the careful side so let me just put something like this for our future reference here and uh look if it's gonna work out great if it doesn't work out okay back to the drawing board but in general for me the main thing which working what's working out right now is that we're getting that breakout um so further upside here is possible if we do slide back inside the pattern and we fall below the 200 day ema that's where i will get a little bit more excited with some lower levels GBPUSD is something to keep in mind, of course, of course, both when the UK data will come out, when the US data will come out, because we have a GBP USD here. Um, and yeah, we're getting into a bit of a squeeze. So look, we also have this downside line, which could be um, an interesting one. And uh, I forgot who, who mentioned it on Friday, uh, the so-called weekly uh, trend line. So uh, I can't remember who, uh, sorry about that. Honestly, uh, if you're here, uh, remind me of yourself, please, because again, this is what you you've mentioned on Friday, and I picked up on this, and uh, actually, I like it, and I I, I will stick to it um, for now. Um, so, look, this uh, trend line here, this long term one, um, is drawn from the highest point of of, of May of from of uh, 2021. So if you, if we break this one, then yes, this may attract a few more buyers into the game, and uh, well, it could be quite an interesting one to watch here because look, we do have um, this uh, barrier here as well, uh, which we will need to keep an eye on this 1.2666 zone. If we clear that one, then yes, further upside here is possible. Too many arrows, I think. There we go. Uh, Euro knock. Uh, just wanted to quickly update you on this one because uh, on Friday we got the numbers, uh, uh, the CPI numbers, if you think, if I'm not mistaken, from uh, Norway. Let me just quickly uh, double check myself. Um, yeah, the CPI numbers were, were better than expected. And yes, there was some strength in Norwegian Krone. So um, yeah, we, we fell below the 50-day EMA. And this is what I was talking about. I said to you that if we do uh, clear it, uh, then I will aim for the 100-day EMA or this 11.47 territory right here. Um, if we do clear that one, then yes, further declines there, guys, are possible. So uh, let me just grab a line here. There we go. So this, uh, it, basically for now, I'm aiming for this territory, this 11.47 zone, approximately around here. Um, it coincides near, it coincides with this 100 EMA right now. So good and potential target as well. If we do clear it, then yes, lower levels could be met. Uh, Euro CHF. Uh, so this one's a mess. Um, I mean, if you remember, I had my falling veg pattern, which didn't really uh, work out nicely. So yeah, I had to remove it. So now, What's next? Uh, look, I think it's time uh, to readjust this chart a little bit. First of all, I want to start fresh and I want to have a fresh look without any lines, just with the EMAs. So at the moment, we're, yes, we're still trading below all of the EMAs here on my daily chart. So in a way, that kind of pointing towards some lower levels. Um, a barrier, important barrier that I'm watching here is, of course, is this. The our area around uh, these two levels, I think this would be best to say, between the 0 0.9761 and 64 levels. Uh, at the same time here, if let's say, for example, we would do break this area, this, yeah, this will confirm a forthcoming higher high, would put place the uh, the pair above the 50-day EMA and could open the door towards the 100 or the 200-day EMA. Um, in terms of the downside, I would say a drop below the 0 0.9671 zone right here somewhere could be a nice, good option. Um, so, 
uh, in a way, I'm also considering something of a range here, but uh, it's too early to talk about that. We maybe we're not seeing a range here. Maybe we're seeing an ascend, a formation of a of an ascending triangle pattern. So, uh, with the upside line like this and a mm, a kind of the upper side of the triangle being this one. So, long story short, if we do clear this territory, then yes, I will get comfortable with some higher levels here and i'll aim for these emas uh, for the downside a break of this upside line is needed and uh, which could also be seen like i said the lower side of the possible ascending triangle and if we do clear then yes i will aim for slightly lower levels and uh, that's where i'm going to aim for an area near the 0 0.9643 at first and finally your usd guys uh, okay, this one's a little bit of a mess. I talked about this. Uh, I said to you that if we do push about the 1.0760 zone right here, then yes, I will get a little bit more excited with the upside. Um, but um, yeah, as you can see here, it, we drifted back to the downside on Friday. We fell back below this hurdle, back below this 1.0760. So in other words, I think that um, it's not really working out. So I need, to, okay, I can keep it on the chart for now, let's say uh, just for the sake of it, but I think it's not really working. So I need to find something else. And again, be me being me, uh, a veg pattern. And I do like these veggies. Uh, honestly, something around this, Again, will that be the case? Look, I would say this way. If we do push again above this 1.0760, I will aim for the 100-day EMA. If that gets cleared, then yes, uh, ignore anything that I said about the veg. This is not a veg. But um, if we somehow do respect this pattern, this idea, um, then yeah, maybe a break to the downside here could be possible. But uh, look, I don't. I'm not really gonna focus on the a veg idea too much. I'm just gonna have it there on my chart. Maybe, maybe, like I said, it will work out. Uh, but I'm mainly gonna stick to let's say this upside line uh, taken from the low of the 31st of May, uh, because if we do clear it, maybe we would also clear the 200 day uh, 31st of May 2023. And if we do clear this, uh, this is the upside line. Sorry, I got confused a little bit. I thought I said something else, but um, if we do drop below this upside line, then yes, a drop below the 200 day EMA here could be possible too. Um, and then, yeah, we this could you know uh, clear the path towards some lower levels. So uh, that's kind of it. That's the boring Euro USD at the moment, to be honest, and uh, not much to say here. Uh, just the only thing is, like I said, we need to keep an eye on today's, uh, not today, today we, have, we don't have much, but uh, tomorrow, the t Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays news, guys. And then we will, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how the, the numbers come out. Uh, we'll see what kind of reactions we'll get. It's a little bit difficult to predict uh, beforehand, uh, but it might be an interesting one. Uh, uh, basically, an interesting one, uh, um, you know, in, in general this week. Sorry, I stalled there a little bit. I started uh, reading uh, the comments there. First of all, uh, Lasher Thread, uh, GBO USD, or you mean GBP USD. I already picked up on that one. It's on the list here. Uh, I mean, I just picked up on this, so you just re-watch re re rewind the video uh later on uh after this uh, after i finish the session and uh yeah you'll i'll i'll sh uh, you can have a look have a look there uh but i already picked up on that one and daredevil dave uh what is a explain what a veg pattern is a veg pattern is like look um where was it i think um let's say in this case when whenever you start uh shifting let's say you had a trend line or let's say you have uh sometimes it, it matters sometimes it doesn't but you have a, a decline here uh, and then it, there is a correction in a way a little correction somebody might say um that is just a correction maybe just a little correction before another uh drop or somebody you know other theorists uh other people who use um these um these abcs and uh one one two three four five patterns uh can flew out of my head honestly how they uh elliot elliot waves there we go uh people who use elliot waves they you know they explain it from the other side me i'm being a, a dow theorist uh, so i go from highs and lows and uh 
and also I, I look at patterns like this. So like, for example, when a veg, a veg pattern is like when you have um, not a channel, uh, but let's say you have a, like a it's like a tri it's basically like a triangle with a tilt in a way so it's uh, you start seeing a correction up here in this case and but it's actually moving not within a channel a nice beautiful channel like for example it, it, like something like this um, it's actually more getting into a bit of a squeeze like that so uh, that's like something like a veg pattern and I think we had something on ethereum like this similar yeah so in here as well again normally you have them prettier um it a, a nicer veg when you have more like you know uh tests of the other each side and you know then it's more significant and then actually it performs uh, according to the old ta rules and these veg patterns tend to break uh let's say the opposite direction of the of the let's say veg pattern trend so if the here in this case for example the veg is to the downside uh the most likely break out the um the, mm, the probability the greater probability is to break out uh to the upside um it's like a correction before another strong buying activity i had one on euro chf which didn't really work out because uh, i had something uh among the lines of this initially um and uh something like this it was a very beautiful uh falling veg pattern here such patterns i mean this is something that you know uh i would like to have a stronger move higher and look maybe it will work out to the upside eventually but whenever it starts just kind of oscillating around the upper side of the veg honestly i don't really like that it's it's becoming messy it's becoming like very biased and that's why just lo the whole logic disappears but if it, if i would have like seen let's say a strong move to the upside here and uh you know a push further north now that would be a perfect scenario for a falling veg pattern and uh yeah but at this point you know we cannot really keep it anymore here because it didn't work out so a lot of things a lot of patterns don't work out guys uh you know but the only thing is what we can do is try to see try to see maybe something or right? in this case look i mean i have this um idea here uh, maybe it will work out but i say um, that's why i'm saying don't really focus on it too much uh, so guys, that's it. I hope I don't know. There, Devil Dave. I hope I've answered the question. But um, also, you look honestly. Feel free to uh, research that a little bit more. Um, it's a, like I said. It's sometimes a useful pattern. It's some. It does work out. Um, and you know. But again, a, a confirmation break is always needed in that pattern as well. Um, so yeah, guys. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you really, really, really very, very, very much uh, for joining this session. Um, I hope you found it useful. Um, if you want to catch me tomorrow morning, as always, uh, so, uh, 6 o'clock GMT time. Uh, for now, I hope you have a fantastic trading day. Don't overtrade, guys. And again, if you feel that nothing's happening today, well, don't be surprised because not much everything's gonna preparing itself for tomorrow and tuesday and, and tuesday wednesday and thursday and friday uh but uh today is a little bit of a kind of a quiet ish day unless something else comes out uh, something non-economic data related and then yes uh, we could see some fluctuations but uh look I, I would say try to stay careful cautious have your stop losses in place and only risk what you can afford to lose thank you very much and bye, -bye. If you want to continue to please the trading gods, subscribe to our channel for a blessing.